Hey guys. So happy, happy, I don't even know day is it. It's Wednesday, it's Wednesday. I think it's, is it hump day? Is it hump day? Happy hump day, guys. We're almost, geez, we're almost through the week. <laughs> I haven't left the state of Florida, forgot. Anyways, we have a major update here about the Kansas moms. You guys have been with me from this, this case almost from the beginning. I really haven't covered it so much on here because Sebastian Rogers' case has really taken a lot of twists and turns, and it's been just an insane case. Well, this is another one that just is really, really super insane. These two women um, were unalived by Veronica's in-laws. And this had been planned. Even Veronica's in-laws had said something about knowing the judge's path to work. That's some eerie stuff. These people are literally, absolutely, utterly insane. We have, um, you know, people talking about this illicit, um, you know, I don't even know what it's called, just anti-government uh, sentiments coming from these people out there. I, I don't know, you know, a whole lot about it, uh, but we've definitely heard about it through the chats and everything else. And these are the four people that were arrested. But then when we got the paperwork out, we're like, wait a minute, there's another, there's another couple names in here. What, what's going on with them? One that seemed like an active participant. An active participant in, in, in the community and social media are wondering, where is the, the fifth arrest? Where is the fifth arrest? Well, the great news is we do have a fifth arrest. Meet Paul Grice. Paul Grice was the person in those affidavits that were there with Cole and Cora blocking the road, forcing Veronica and Jillian, Jillian to turn down that dirt path. Um, they had originally uh, picked him up and detained him for questioning. They had insufficient evidence to arrest him. He was let go, and many people thought it was over. Uh, but after I read that affidavit, I knew all they were doing was working to collect enough evidence to finally make an arrest, and that is exactly what they did. Uh, they uh, charged him with suspicion to commit two homicides. Of course, the... Um, the two counts of um, first degree, you know what, um, conspiracy to commit in the first and of course the kidnapping charge as well. So um, this is kind of new information. And again, there's one other name in that affidavit and I'm still trying to figure out, did they have any culpability in this crime either before or after? and that's the Beasleys. The Beasleys is the property where the two girls were found on. Are they innocent people and just rented, um, you know, to Tiffany's boyfriend, Tad? Is it Tad? I think his name's Tad. Tad Cullum. If that's the case, then I think we've got a wrap. But if it's not, if Beasley had more involvement than we think, we should be waiting for a sixth arrest. So here's all your latest and greatest information. And again, this is related to Jillian Kelly and Veronica Butler, again, senselessly unalived for no good reason. And you know what really upsets me is they were trying to put Veronica's name through the mud even after all of this. There were people in, in even in my own Facebook uh, group that I created for these women to help share information out there, which has grown quite substantially. And I've got to tell you, it was hard hearing them try to blame this woman for something that her brother may have done or may not have done. It sounds like he was charged with something. And while I get that he was charged with something, you have to understand that is still her biological brother. And you don't know what the dynamics were, whether these kids were even allowed around her brother. But at the end of the day, that was still her brother. And whatever her brother did is not what she did. They weren't going after to attack her brother. They didn't plan things to, to unalive her brother. They weren't sitting there in February going to her brother's house. They went to her house. 
and they're trying to use this illusion that she put her child in harm's way because her brother is this RSO. I don't know. People have said, substantiated that he was charged with that. I could give a rat's patootie because if these people really were out for the RSOs, why do we have these two beautiful ladies being buried? Why are these two beautiful ladies gone? The last time I knew, neither one of these two ladies have ever been accused of that, let alone charged, much less convicted. So if that's the excuse, please explain to me why they are the ones that are out there buried, you know? And I think that that's what the defense is going to be, is that they put, thought she was putting the children in harm's way. And if that was the case, then why didn't you, why didn't you go after the harm? So I thought you're a local. Who's this? Hold on, Nicole. I very rarely read my comments, so I, I just happened to grab yours. Nice. I'm really sorry for what's going on out there, but I'm glad. Yeah, the fifth person is Paul Grice, correct. I'm glad that they got this handled very quickly, but it seemed like, I mean, to be honest with you, I'm all the way here in Florida, and within, I think, just a few hours, I had already acquired so much information that it already pointed right to Tiffany and Tad to, to begin with. Um, and, and his brother. I, I heard he had a brother. I, I'm, I'm surprised that his brother is not named in there anywhere. But you know what? The problem is, and somebody brought this up, and I'm just going to say this before I close out, Wrangler. This is Veronica, Veronica Butler, the, the, the uh, man she had the kids with. Um, a Wrangler's mother is Tiffany. Wrangler's mother is the one that is uh, behind bars that has admitted to unaliving both of these women. So Wrangler, this is the problem I have is Wrangler just went to rehab days before this happened. Days, okay? But he wasn't in rehab in February. So where in the world was Wrangler? I want to know. Because in my heart of hearts, Wrangler knew about this. I think Wrangler has known about this. And so I want to know where he was in February. And I think the people out there should be asking that question, that very question, because this story's not over. And clearly a lot of people knew a lot of stuff and chose to keep their mouth shut while two beautiful women were senselessly unalived in probably the, the most brutal way possible. And if anybody knows that's watching this, shame on you. You're making me sick. So I don't know what else to say than that, but... These two beautiful ladies didn't deserve it, but the, the fifth person is behind bars. And again, Paul Grice has debuted on the bull, has officially debuted on the Bullhorn Betty channel as being a real piece of crap. This man right here has children. I heard he's a family man. How he can be involved in taking the life of a mother makes me sick absolutely sick so keep going that's all i gotta say texas county keep going there's there's more peel back them on that those layers of onion there's more there's more wranglers in there somewhere i'm telling you wranglers in that mix somewhere keep looking that it's not done yet it's not done yet start going back to february data and i'm telling you they're wrangler new I don't believe in in at all. Who who believes Wrangler had no clue what his mother was up to? I don't think that for one stinking second. <laughs> I don't even believe that for one stinking second. He knew, he knew in jail, and we knew he we we thought he knew in jail and in you know, everybody's like, "No, he probably didn't know that that that." that. Well, oh, or not in jail, but in the rehab. But now we know that something happened in February. You can't tell him working with Tad? Mm -mm. Don't tell me that. Wrangler needs to be right there. Wrangler needs to be sitting next to his mother. That's where Wrangler needs to be. That's where Wrangler needs to be. Hey, Jules, it's nice to see you. I see Karen in here too. It's nice to see you all. Thank you for coming, but what, that was really it. I don't really have a whole lot. 
this is just it. <clears throat> I just wanted to let you guys know that name that we saw in the affidavit, Paul Grice. I mean, I think I read it live right here on TikTok. And I'm like, who's Paul Grice? And why isn't he arrested? We had just watched the press conference and they said, we've got everybody we're going to, to arrest. And it's like, what? Paul was out there. Why isn't Paul arrested? And then I get all these emails and text messages that they took Paul down. And so I'm like, yeah, you know, this is it, this is it. And then we get the message that they released him. And then they did a, a notification that they released him because they didn't have enough evidence and everybody was really disappointed and thought it was over. And I remember saying, nope, not over. They're just gonna collect some evidence and he's, gonna, he's going to jail. If they've got enough to drag him in there, they've got a, they're, they're almost there, they're almost there. They're probably wanting him to lie to them so they can show deception. I don't know. I don't know. Yep, with the first degree, yep. He's he's right along with him. But I'm telling you, Wrangler has a mix in this. And I really hope law enforcement really hones in on Wrangler and Wrangler's, Wrangler's communication. He's somewhere in there. He is absolutely somewhere in there. All right, guys, that's all I got for you right now on this case. Oh, I need to come back. Maddie Soto. We had a press conference on Maddie Soto. It really didn't let me just put that up i might as well go ahead and just run with it hold on guys we're going to be doing um let me find maddie soto let me find a picture of madeline soto and then we'll roll with it oh look right there okay so we got an update on uh madeline soto, soto. uh you guys know uh stefan stearns was arrested for those that are just tuning in or don't know anything about this case if you know anything about the sebastian rogers case he disappeared on february 26. well it just so happens that maddie soto disappeared from kissimmee florida on the same morning this is madeline soto she's from kissimmee florida she disappeared on february 26 and her mom's boyfriend stefan stearns was arrested two days later she had not yet been found he was arrested because law enforcement ended up finding over 400 very disturbing images and videos on his phone. He tried to reset his phone when Madeline Soto had um, disappeared and said it was just an accident. But it was amazing because whatever technology that law enforcement has, they were able to recover over 400 images okay the, sh the sheer gravity of this case against him that was unrelated to her disappearance we have all been sitting here waiting for law enforcement to finally charge people in this case here's a few things that i want to talk to you guys about from um the uh, press conference so we have learned from the press conference that um, Stefan Stearns has officially been charged with the first degree homicide of Madeline Soto. Law enforcement nor the state attorney would give us one iota of information related to what happened, what he was charged with. What we know before his arrest or right around the time of his arrest is that Madeline Soto was seen inside his car and they believe she was deceased at the time she was seen on camera inside his car. So that was one of the biggest hurdles I had as to why it was taking so long to charge him because they literally had him on camera with her in his car, him driving her car and her being deceased. So what law enforcement says is until his attorney, his public defender starts engaging in discovery, we're not going to be able, the public and media is not going to be able to get any information directly related to uh, the case. Now, one interesting situation that he did say that I thought was very telling, I had suspected, and we don't know if this is going to come to fruition or if it holds water, but it is a theory of mine. Um, I have been a, a strong rooter and supporter of Jennifer Soto in, in as much that I don't think she knew what this man truly was doing to her daughter. Now, did she put her daughter in harm's way? I, you know, was a little hesitant to say that in the heat of the moment, you know, when everything was going on. But I do believe that Jennifer Soto did put her daughter 
in harm's way, predominantly when he threatened to unalive himself in front of Jennifer and Maddie and carried a gun with him, um, a pew pew with him in, um, you know, while he was just, everybody knew he was this toter, you know? And so that, if he didn't threaten himself to, you know, unalive himself, then I don't think that there would have been an issue. But because he did and he carried, I think that that is where she endangered her daughter. That's when she should have made him leave until he got the appropriate help necessary uh, to, to make sure he was stable. So I do believe she's going to have something of those type of charges. I don't think she's going to have any charges related to an accessory before, during, or after related to her daughter's unaliving or the atrocious uh, behaviors of uh, Stefan Stearns when it comes to her daughter. If you notice in the probable cause affidavit or in the indictment or whatever the affidavit is that was attached to it, you will learn that these things happened almost during... Um, almost during summer vacation hours. And I think that was when she was in uh, his sole custody and mom was at work. That's what I truly do believe uh, to be the case. However, getting back to what was said there. So one of the, thank you guys, one of the uh, reporters out there asked about whether Jennifer would get charged. And he said that he, they have not, you know, this is an ongoing investigation. Uh, he said uh, the, the investigation is still ongoing and it is not over. So I think that that was telling because to me that is implying that there most likely will be charges, just in my opinion. I don't know if that's the case though. But it's also what gives me the feeling and why I said I thought she would be charged with something is because she gave the ashes, her daughter's ashes, to um, her father. So Madeline went home with Tyler and his wife, Tatiana. So I don't know a mother that's willing to part with her daughter and unless she knew um, she wouldn't be able to be with her daughter. You know, there there's one thing about... Like Maddie Mogan's mom, there's one thing about not being able to look at your daughter because you're grieving so heavily. And there's another thing to give your daughter away. You see what I'm saying? Maddie Mogan um, was never given to the Gonzalez. They kept the girls together because Maddie Mogan's mom couldn't handle it. She was going through, as you can imagine, a grieving mom just and this was her only child and this is jennifer soto's only child and i wish we could see some of the public grieving but you know what this is such a personal and private matter i can't even imagine um you know we can blame jen all all day long until the cows come home and be as nasty and as mean as we can possibly be to that woman but i don't think i mean think of it you know we as parents make mistakes all the time um this is almost inexcusable, but I don't think she ever thought something like this was going on or could happen. And I can't imagine as a parent finding out this information um, and believing the person you were lying next to to be the protector and find out he was the mom. I, I, I just personally trying to put myself in that position. I just I don't I I would probably not do be, be doing very well personally. A friend is a vacation planner for Disney and said they all work from home, go in only for meetings. Well, uh, and that may be fine, but she wasn't a vacation, just a vacation planner. She was one of the, the, the clerks, like the desk people, the people that help check you in and stuff like that, from my understanding, um, she, where she had to be physically present. So I know there are some jobs like that, and maybe it was a split thing, but I know she, like on the, that Sunday when it was her daughter's birthday, she was at work. So I don't, you know what I'm saying? So if she was at work, I don't see how she could be at work. I mean, that's, that is what she said. She was at work and, and, and couldn't attend her daughter's birth, which I, that was sad. You know, 13, <clears throat> there's only a few big numbers for people in, you know, as you, as you're aging through. And 13 to me 
is that big number. You know, 13 is a huge number for a girl because, you know, we're so young and we want to grow up so fast. And it's like, you know, we go from being like, this is, this it's our teenage, like we're, we're, we're really a teenager. Like this is, this is it. Like we are awesome. We are now officially a freaking teenager. We made it to 13. We went from 12 to 13. Woohoo! We're a teenager. And our mama missed it. 13 is, is next to sweet 16. I'm sorry, it is. It is. It's a very important it's a very important birthday for a girl. So it's I don't know. I just I, I felt a little peculiar peculiar about that. Um so they said the indictments on the website. I did pull what I could and it just basic it didn't give me a whole lot of information. It just basically said he's indicted on, on one count of um, you know, on aliving. So there was another question and I wrote, wrote down here, they're still discussing the facts of the case to see if there are any, oh, this is related to the DP eligible. They're, um, um, they're talking about uh, the DT, DP eligibility and they're not even close to making that decision yet in the Madeline Soto case. So we'll keep, we got a lot of work here. You know, it, 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 it's just now starting it doesn't look like the prosecution is willing to give us a, even an iota of what happened, um, what the story may be. So we're just going to have to wait and wait until the discovery process um, works its way out because they're not giving us anything until the public record laws require them to provide it to us. So, and according to our public record laws, we're not required to, you know, they are not required to turn those over to the public until discovery has started. And um, so that's where we're at, folks. That is truly where we're at. And then we'll have to go through the process of requesting that, that public information. The good news on this particular case is this is in my own backyard. Where this is going on is like two hours away from my home. So if we need to go over there to get stuff, if we need to go and, 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 and look at some information, just, just let me know. Send me your, your information, you know, about this case because it is so close to me. If we need to go over something or you guys need to see something or you guys just want to go for a road trip and, you know, take a spin around and see what everything looks like, you know, personally, let me know. And I'm happy to... Um, to do it. Oh, Sabrina, you're only 30 minutes. Well, then reach out to me at bullhornbetty at gmail.com and maybe um, you and I can meet up or something like that. If you're, if you know the area, I'd like to be, <laughs> I always like to have somebody around me, you know, but I mean, if you can't, I understand, but uh, reach out to bullhornbetty at gmail.com because I will be making a trip out there at some point uh, to go over the case, whether it be um, to go to the trial hearing or uh, just to do some, you know, I, I, I'm not ready to, to open that up yet. Uh, so anyways, guys, I love you. God bless you. Those are your daily updates right now. As I know them, uh, we had some information on the two Kansas moms. Uh, for those that are just joining in, the two Kansas moms, there was a fifth arrest. The Paul Grice that we read in the affidavit was officially arrested and charged with the, uh, the same as the other uh, four offenders in there. And like I had said, I really want to see uh, um, either Wrangler arrested or Wrangler cleared because even though he was not involved, because he was, well, I shouldn't say involved, he was not physically present uh, when the girls were unalived because he was in rehab. But there was still a February event where they went to hunt Veronica down. And the only thing that saved her life that night was she was a couch potato and didn't come out of her house. That, to me, is scary as hell. Scary as hell. I don't know what this world is coming to. Um, I have no words. I literally have no words. So... Take it for what you will, but I want to see Wrangler either in jail or cleared, and I want him done by law enforcement. I want them coming out and explaining why he's not sitting right next to his mother. I'm sorry. God bless.